In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the vectors that we created from the related vector drawing tutorial to create the toolpaths that once machined will produce the parts that form the child's name plaque you see on the screen. A preview of the toolpaths that we're going to create are shown here also. So the first stage is for us to close this part down and open the original vector drawing job file. So file close, open an existing file and we're going to pick the child's name plaque vector drawing.crv file and we can see the part has been opened and we have a series of vectors on the screen. If we move up to the layers let's take a look at the different uh, vectors that we have and we'll start by switching them all off. Uh, we're going to take a look initially at the letter bevel which is where we'll be taking a v-bit tool and just profiling down by 100 thou to create a nice letter bevel on the top of our molly letters. Uh, next we'll be taking a look at these sort of tabs because what we do need to do is to machine down a little in order to make sure that when we vertically place the molly onto the plaque that our tabs uh, sit neatly in the slots and don't violate the letters. And then we've also got the slots into which our tabs will locate. And then of course we have the cutout which we'll use to cut the part out but we will be leaving tabs so we can break this away once it's been machined. In this case we'll be using the vector selector so I can afford to keep all the vectors displayed on the screen. And now we're going to move across away from the drawing menu and onto the machining menu. So flipping across now, we'll start by taking a look at the material setup. So opening up the form, we can see that our thickness is going to be 0.625 of an inch. Our XY datum is in the lower left hand corner. Our Z0 is from the material surface. And we've got suitable values for our rapid heights and our home position. Okay, so we're going to start with the first toolpath, which is to create the letter bevel across the top of the molly letters. So I'm going to open the profile toolpath, and the initial thing we need to do is to specify our cut depths. Well, we're going to be going from the top of the block, so that's specified as zero, and our cut depth is just 0.1. And the tool we are going to use is a V-bit tool. So I'm going to come back into our tool database and select our half inch 90 degree V-bit. Select that across now. And we next need to decide whether we're going to be machining outside, inside or on. In this case, it will be on. And then we can move all the way down now to actually pick the vector. So rather than selecting from the screen, we're actually going to use the vector selector because this will allow us if we need to modify the letters, if we wanted to change the name, etc., then it would uh, we could automatically have this pick those vectors up and remachine. So I'm going to go into the selector now and we can see that um, I've specified open and close vectors so you can differentiate between the two but in this case I want to select both because I have both and in this case I'm going to be picking the letter bevel and I'm going to pick associate with toolpath therefore if we remodify the vectors on a particular level we can just recalculate that toolpath and it will automatically update to reflect the new vectors. So I'm going to close that now and come across and change the name and I'm just going to call this a letter bevel which is in line with the layer and calculate. So we have the uh, toolpath shown in 2D there and I'm just going to simulate that now so we can see that being created and I'm just going to change the toolpath color to sort of a dark brown color that we can see there and we can see that we've nicely applied that bevel using a profile toolpath running along those vectors with a v-bit tool. So the next stage we need to do is to consider just taking out these small pocket regions which must sit lower than the letters. Now given the letter bevel goes down by a hundred thou, we need to create those small sort of pocket tabs down just past it. So we're actually going to be doing them at 0.125 of an inch in depth. Okay, so the next stage is for us to close this down now and to come across and select the pocket toolpath. So we'll get the same start depth will be specified since we'll be cutting from the top of the block, but the cut depth rather than 0.625, which is the full depth, is going to be 0.125, so just pass 
R.1 inch initial bevel. The tool we're going to be using, so if I'm going to select the form now, we've got a series of end mills there. So we've got a half, a quarter and an eighth. But in this case, I want very close to a quarter. I actually want a three sixteenths. So I don't have this in my tool database. I'm actually going to create it. So with this, I'm going to select my quarter inch end mill and then come down to my icons at the bottom of which one is to copy the selected tool. So I'm going to pick that now and immediately it's given it a dummy name the same as the original and you can see it's grayed out. In other words, we've not completed all the parameters. So I'm going to come across to the right hand pane and just change the diameter. So the diameter rather than being quarter of an inch, it's going to be, I'm going to give it a fraction now. So three over 16 equals so that gives us our 0.1875 and it's now asking for us to from which tool do we want to copy the um, feeds and speeds well I'm going to copy these from the quarter inch tool so I'm just going to copy those now which will then fill that in I'm actually going to change the uh, percentage down from 50 to just 40 so that's going to reduce our step over there I'm going to apply that now and then select that tool which will then pop into the form so I'm now going to come down and say, okay, what do I want to do with the way in which I want to clear the material, whether I want to raster or offset, I've gone for offset. I'm now going to go down and select the particular vectors on a layer. So I'm going to come into our vector selector, open and close switched on again. I'm going to switch off the letter bevel now and pick the pocket tabs, associate with the toolpath in case I change it, close that down now. And I'm just going to change the name from pocket two to pocket tabs and then calculate that okay so we can see that tool pass being created there and I'm just going to simulate that now and we can just see if we orientate that and zoom in you can see that pocket has just gone past the bevel on the molly letters so we've successfully created two tool pass and now we're going to move on and look at creating the tool path for the slots Okay, so let's refer back to the 2D view so we can take a look at what those slots look like. And these are the two profiles that we're going to be using. Once again, I'm not going to be selecting from the 2D view because I will be using the vector selector. So coming across to the toolpath menu now, and I'm going to pick up the uh, pocket toolpath again. And in this case, we do not need to go down by just 0.125 but we need to go down a depth suitable to obviously fit these tabs in so in this case it's going to be 0.375 okay we're going to use the same 316 inch end mill and um, with the same offset strategy but in this case i'm going to go down to the selector and just click off of the pocket tabs pick the slots associate the toolpath and then close the vector selector and i'm just going to change the name now and call this slots so as I calculate that now, you can see that the toolpath has been created and I'm just going to simulate that so we can see that toolpath created. Now, one thing to note here is that the tabs that we are going to create need to fit into here. Now, at the moment, we have zero allowance between both of these. So we've got a direct mating of those edge surfaces, which could be very tricky to force the tabs into there. So actually what I want to do is to apply a little bit of extra allowance or overcut the pockets. Now this is easy to see if we actually move to a horizontally tiled view and we're going to come in now and just switch on the original slots toolpath which we can see there and I can actually draw this in sort of a, a solid view. So you can see there that we are cutting to the absolute edge of that pocket. So I'm going to come back in now and just double click on the slots and under allowance, we're going to apply a negative allowance of basically 10 thou. So as I apply that now and calculate, okay, you can see that we have just overcut that profile just slightly, which will allow the tabs on the bottom of the molly letters to actually nicely fit into there. It will still be a tight fit. But unless I applied allowance, it's probably unlikely that it would have fitted. So with that now, I'm just going to re-simulate that, which will just slightly widen that out. OK, and now we can look to create the um, cutout profile. So I'm going to just come back to the full 3D view now. And we've got three of our four toolpaths. So I'm just going to close out the preview toolpath and come back up to select the profile toolpath.
And next we need to consider the cut depth. So in this case, we'll be going from the top of the block zero and our cut depth will be all the way through. So it's gonna be um, Z equals, which will give me the full thickness of the material. I'm not going to be selecting a V bit tool for this. In this case, I will use my 3 16th M mil that we created earlier on and just select that. Now the machine vectors, before we've also been machining just on, but in this case, we want to be outside that sort of cutout vector. And as we move down now, one thing I do need to be aware of is how this is being fixed to the actual machine. In this case, I've got it fixed with clamps, in which case I need to make sure that when I machine the letters and the base that it doesn't break away from the material. So I'll need to add tabs. But before I do that, I do need to select those vectors and I'm doing that through the vector selector. So I'm just gonna switch off the slots, switch on the cutout, associate it with the toolpath, okay, and close that down. And now I can go ahead and start to create the tabs. So I'm gonna add the tabs now. So I'm gonna to go to edit tabs. That will flip me into the 2D view, okay, because this is where I'll be adding the tabs. So I need to be aware of where I should suitably put the tabs to supply stability so the letters will not break away. So I'm gonna just place them maybe one here, one on the edge of the M there, maybe one on the top of the O, the lower of that L, okay, and across here, maybe on the Y, and then I'm gonna put maybe four, sort of two either side on the plaque base. So I'm happy with that now. I'm gonna close that down I'm gonna call this cutout, and then we're gonna to look to create the toolpath. So I'm happy with all my parameters. I'm gonna calculate that now. Everything seems to be okay. I'm going to proceed now with simulating that. So I'm just gonna press play on that. Now, one thing that I've noticed, actually when you look in this, and this is part of the reason why the simulation plays an important role, is that we are left with this island in the center of our O, which will have broken away as we profile around the inside. So I need to address this before I move on and actually write the, uh, the tool pass out as G code. So with this, I'm just gonna pop back into, so I'm actually gonna undo the last sort of uh, simulation, double click on the tool path, and then come across to the tabs and go to edit tabs now, which will flip me back into the 2D view. And I'm just gonna add in two tabs which will give stability to that sort of island in the center of the O. So closing that out now, back down to calculate. So we can now simulate that. So I'm just gonna sort of play that now. And we should see that we've got our tabs specified there, okay? So the tabs have been specified. You can see actually from the form that the length of the tab is 200 thou and the thickness is just 50 thou. This will give it enough stability to stop the items breaking away, but they're not too big that I would have to do too much material removal once I've finished the machining. So with that, I can just close out now, and then we can see actually that we have created all the tool paths uh, to create this child's name plaque. So our letter bevel, our pocketing of the tabs to remove the top off the tabs, the slots into which the tabs will locate, and of course our cutout. And we made sure that we um, oversized our slots a little in order to allow the tabs to fit in. So at this stage, I could go ahead and start uh, creating the G-code. And if we notice from our tool pass that three of the four actually have used the same tool. So in which case we can actually take those tool pass and post those out and we can select the output all visible tool pass to one file. Okay, in which case we could take all of those and write them out as one G code file rather than three separate ones. Okay, so I'm not going to actually write out any of the G code, but this is something that you'll do for when you actually output it to your machine. In this case, what I am going to do, of course, is save the project. So I'm going to save that now as our child's name plaque 2D toolpass.zrf file. And then we can always come back to it and repost out those toolpaths at a later point.